so it's been about a week now in early signing period in college football. And so we've got to see how some rosters are shaping and everything. And we want to talk a little bit about these Sooner recruits. We've been picking up a lot of Sooner subscribers. Yes. Appreciate y'all joining us. Appreciate you riding with us. Um, you, there's so many people you can join, you can ride with, and you, you chose us, and we really do appreciate that. So make sure you hit like, subscribe, and share, because, of course, sharing is caring. So we're going to talk about some of these recruits that I like. So Oklahoma lucked out. I'm not even going to say it's lucked out. They went out there and hustled their asses off and made this happen. Finishing so far with a national rank of 10, um, uh, 10th ranked national, uh, um, 10th ranked recruiting class. My apologies. Can get the words out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the number two in the big 12. And I'll explain how that's really not that big a deal. <laughs> and I'm looking at a uh, 24 seven sports site. They're composite. They at a, a 0.91 as far as their score, mm-hmm. which is actually really good uh, with 12 commits out of the four-star area so jimmy now that oklahoma has gotten their coaching staff in place and they're hitting their recruiting trails levy got his first win with the quarterback out of flower mound texas we'll talk about in a moment Mm -hmm. and uh venables has been picking up some really good players what do you think about this class that they've got built so far um you know i obviously think and i can think it's a really good class but i think the the rankings show that and their performances in high school. I mean, so we know that these are really good prospects, uh, all, the majority of which are all four-star. Mm-hmm. But I think that when you get a collection of four-star high school athletes into a program that has the level of coaching that OU is going to have, those fours become fives, in my opinion, yeah. in terms of how they're going to develop them and how they're going to use each of their skill sets. So I really like this class. Um, there were... And this may be part of what you're asking me as far as uh, you asked me just overall or if there were one or two that I thought yeah, were well, going to have the Overall, how did you like the yeah. class, which you said, like you said, uh-huh. that, uh, most of there's 12 commits that are uh, four stars, three, three stars. Some of those will shift into five stars because of coaching, which is exactly what you want to do, which is how Notre Dame has been eating and surviving over the years mm-hmm. with uh, with Brian Kelly. They, they've yeah. been able to get the right players and and up them because mm-hmm. of their skill set, which gets them into the pros. Oklahoma do that. So do you have a couple players I do. That, you, that that jumped out to you that got your I, attention? I do, and you're probably going to have to help me with this because I'm a bit biased. Um, He's biased. Like a lot of people, the offensive side of the ball is my favorite side of the ball. Yeah, so, he likes points. I mean, you all saw last week, if you watched our video last week, how excited I got about talking about Jeff Lebby and his offensive system and what he's going to bring to OU. So I will I will preface that, um, even though I think they have a, a couple of really good defensive players, one in particular that I think is going to be fantastic for Brent Venables and Ted Roof. But um, it came down to two players. It came down to the running back, Gavin Sawchuck. Did I say that right? Sawchuck, Sawchuck. Sawchuck, yeah. Out of Colorado, um, number five running back overall. And Jaden Gibson, the six foot five wide receiver Ooh. out of Florida, <laughs> who I watched film on. And, oh, man, he's, he was so much fun to watch. It came down to those two. I was like, all right, which one do I think is going to ultimately have the biggest impact on this team? And I said to myself, it's probably going to be Gavin Sawchuck because, as I talked about last week um, when I broke down Jeff Lebby's offense, that it's an air rate offense, but the foundation of it is the run. It does not work if that run game is not working. So I think that for that reason, Sawchuck, who could be the, you know, after after Kennedy Brooks and I mean, Eric Gray, is he still going to be there after this? No, I think Eric Gray's probably, well, we'll see. Yeah. So that, I, 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 nobody's declared right. like that. So ultimately, he could become the cornerstone of this run game, and that run game is really going to be the engine that's going to really help this offense to go as it has with Jeff Levy's offenses no matter where he's been. So I would say the most impactful, if I project in a year or two, is probably going to be Gavin Sawchuck, okay. at least on the offensive side of the ball. So I would say him just slightly over Jaden Gibson, who, my God, you got to watch film on him. He is so much fun to watch. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. He is. So the one that jumped out for me, yeah, yeah Jaden Gibson is going to be interesting especially coming out of Florida, and, and the fact that they were able to keep him as a signature is, of course, amazing. Kobe McKenzie mm, mm-hmm. is one that jumped out to me. 6'2", 245 linebacker out of Lubbock, Texas. He left, flipped right back, <laughs> and he said that he had a surprise. So I'm assuming that he has someone else that's going to follow him there. Okay, uh, We'll see how that – I may have missed it. I need to do, do some more digging on it. It's been a busy two weeks. But I think there's a couple of players that really jumped out to me. So I think, I think Kobe's going to be something that we can keep our eyes on. Uh, linebacker-wise, he, I mean, he can go out there looking like uh, Kenneth Murray. I think he's <laughs> bigger than Kenneth. He can go out there and really be a beast, especially if he's as fast as he is uh, projected or he, he looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, but Nick 
Evers. Nick mm. Evers. Yeah. Adding Nick Evers and then a wide receiver out of Katy, Texas, Nicholas Anderson. You know who Nicholas Anderson is? Mm. That is Rodney Anderson's little brother. Really? Yes. Okay. All right, so he kind of maybe did him a solid, you know, talk, talk to him about the program. Come on down here, expect. boy. You will enjoy <laughs> yourself. Yes, yes, he is related mm-hmm. to um, to uh, Rodney. Mm-hmm. So um, I can totally see him stepping up and stepping out because here's the thing when it comes to ranking. So I said OU is the number two in the Big 12, of course, Texas, once again, has one of the top ranked recruiting classes but having a top ranked recruiting class means absolutely nothing if you can't coach exactly exactly as you said you bring in these four stars you turn them into five stars because they come out there and excel they go to the pros now at a certain point oklahoma is going to have to figure out how to get some more some of these top two ranked um 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 classes Mm -hmm. which i feel they'll be able to get with venables especially as he starts to tweak that defense and we see that big difference, that, mm-hmm. that big change with him and Ted Roof making that defense look different, that be I have no concerns about. It's going to be a top five offense. So far, it looks like Caleb Williams is going to be is going to stay. Mm-hmm. It already looks Theo Wise, uh, Wise, I'm sorry, Theo Wise has um, pulled his name out of the transfer portal. So that told me that, okay, Caleb's most likely going to stay, play out his career here and dominate and really put up more numbers than what he was last, this past season. Mm-hmm under Lincoln Riley and be taught a little differently. So because of that, I'm pretty amped to see what these young players bring in. Cause I think, cause Nick said that when he, um, I was reading an article. He said that when he was coming, that he did not want to start as a freshman. If he didn't have to, he wanted to grow more in a year, grow into his body because it means six, three, one eighty eight. So he's little. Yeah. Uh, play yeah, he quarterback is. he's small i need him to put on about 40 pounds <laughs> legitimately because you you want that extra fluff mm-hmm. to absorb those hits so i i need uh, shock absorbing you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. <laughs> insulation i need him to <laughs> to grow more uh size wise as well as just grow it in the game and he said that he wants to get better at that and i think levy can definitely do that for him mm-hmm. But Nicholas out there at wide receiver, another 6'3", big wide receiver. That's what them Texas quarterbacks be having all the time. Them big old boys. Xavier Worthy is monstrous. He's fucking huge. Mm-hmm. We get more of them, him, and like you said, Jaden Gibson at 6'5". Oh, it's going to be a, <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun. But that was what the, Stoops and them did, and even Riley. Like Hollywood, they get them little guys and make them monstrous. We haven't really seen big guys. Like I thought Hazelwood was going to be better than what he is. I mean, no shade to him, but he he underwhelmed me the entire time he was there. So we'll see what it looks like. But those are the guys that excite me too. Mm, okay, all right. Well, Sooner fans, be excited. It's gonna be nice. We're gonna talk more about recruiting and stuff over the few weeks as well. Um, we're gonna make sure we add this as a segment through because this is becoming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got the uh, bowl, the bowl game coming up, the Alamo Bowl, right? Next yep, Wednesday, Alamo so Bowl. We'll, so we'll prepare you for that next week. Yep, yeah, we prepare for the Alamo Bowl, mm-hmm. and then from there you'll uh, get post Al, uh, Alamo Bowl analysis. Mm-hmm. Then we'll talk about more recruiting as we prepare to go into the recruiting season and February uh, and, and sign National Signing Day. Mm-hmm. We'll go for that. So. Cool.